Today we're on Desmos, and that's because I have this complex number calculator that I just recently was developing, and I think I just wanted to add it to the channel since I think it's a useful tool. I'll have this Desmos graph um, link into the description. So, might as well start simple. We have a complex function f, and it's equal to currently zero. Um, the way we use the plane, we, uh, there's a couple options. There's just a point. You can add a circle around the point, which may be useful for visualizing stuff like the fundamental theorem of algebra. And there's also a, a customizable grid. This list of derivatives is just um, a little bit of maintenance. It's not really a folder that you need to worry about. Um, but this slider here is the number of derivatives that are active. So in this calculator currently, I've put a maximum of 15 derivatives. And in the grid, I've put a 10 by 10 grid of lines. Now those lines can be spaced apart evenly across the x and y axis. Um, and you can change the coordinates. But unfortunately, currently it's only 10 lines. And the number of derivatives is 15, which is good for a lot of stuff, um, especially in small local regions. I just know for larger stuff, you may want more lines or especially complex stuff like the zeta function, for example. Now, before I go any further, it also must be mentioned that since Desmos doesn't know complex numbers, um, we, we're actually using i sort of as a parameter the whole time. So... On the surface, you can do stuff like multiply by i, um, which I guess we can start. So let's do a, a point here. And let's take our function, which is currently just mapping everything to zero, and make it z. So we see the maps to itself. And then let's multiply by i. So you see 1 times i is i, since this is the imaginary axis. And you see uh, i squared is negative 1, uh, negative i or I, uh, negative one times i is negative i. So any polynomials this, th um, this calculator understands, it can even have complex coefficients. You know, uh, let's go with z squared minus i. So one squared is um, one, and then one minus i goes to one minus i. So, um, we also get i squared is negative 1, negative 1 minus i will go to negative 1 minus i. So polynomials work for sure up to 15 degrees. Um, after that, you just need to go down here. It looks complicated, but you can just copy paste, for example, like this. Change that to a 16, a 16, and that to a 15. So it's a tileable design. Unfortunately, Desmos is not too good with arrays which would be really helpful so I don't have to copy-paste lists like this. But that's just what we're dealing with. So back to the misunderstanding of i with this calculator. i is being used as a parameter, so unfortunately it doesn't exactly know what to do. Oh, it does get i squared as negative 1. Um, but in terms of using i in a, in a way that's not analytically, um, since this this calculator does treat i like a analytic function, it treats everything analytically. Um, basically what that means is you don't really wanna divide by i. So if you do one over i, it just disappears, right? The, the function's undefined in the, at least at i equals zero, which i is obviously square root of minus one, but the way this thing um, is, calculator treats it is um, lots of partial derivatives with respect to i, as you saw, and then evaluating it i at zero. So in this case, one over zero, it's, it's undefined. So basically all this means is you're just gonna, if you have something with one over i, just rewrite it as negative i since they are the same, it's just the calculator can't understand it. And I think that's something that's nice about this calculator is I haven't given it any functions. 
I've looked at a lot of other calculators they require you to use operations. This have, has a nice user interface in the sense that you can just type in up here whatever you want and you will get accuracy. And you don't really need to type in any weird do the exponential function. It, it, it's already using it in the way that it looks normal. So e to the zero one, everyone's favorite. So you go up to e to the pi i is negative one. So that's all working well. Let's go back to polynomials because I think polynomials are the best thing to show um, the radius tool. So something interesting with the radius that you can do is there's our radius. So this region in the plane gets mapped to this region for this function z squared plus one. You can change the radius and this is really good because it kind of lets you find roots. So like, oh, there's a root over here. Let me shrink the radius. Ooh, I miss it. So let me just move around. I can shrink the radius more. Get it? And the point is that this small region in the complex plane corresponds to this. And since if you're looking for a polynomial that has a solution, this contains zero. The output contains zero, so the solution must be in here. We obviously know that it, this solution is i, since i squared plus one is zero. And same thing with negative i. So the ring is definitely a nice thing. And the only other final thing I'd obviously want to show is the grid. Now, the grid is very laggy. So you can customize the dimensions of this grid in the sense that you can move it around. Um, it's always going to have 10 grid lines, horizontal and vertical. That's sort of what these alpha and um, beta are if you're curious. So alpha and beta are set to 10. And they're not going to move because um, all this complicated coordinate lines and stuff, which again, if we had an array in Desmos, that would be really good, but we don't. Um, so you'd have to tile this. You'd have to copy, paste, add in 11th line, change alpha and beta. Um, it's just, I'd like to make it tileable, but unfortunately Desmos doesn't have arrays. So we're kind of stuck with 10, unless you feel personally as a viewer or a user of this, like copy pasting a lot. So this is the grid. Um, and this capital T here is sort of the animation of the grid. So it's taking every single point and moving it along a line segment until it goes to where it's supposed to be in the map. So currently I have this set on just play once. Very slow speed, right? 1 20th of the normal speed. And if you play this for z squared plus one, you'll see every single point being squared and then being added one continuously. So obviously if you wanted nice quality, if you were thinking of using this as an animation, um, I'd keep the speed at 1 20th, and all that you would do is just film it like this, and then just speed up the frame. Since you'll have really nice pictures, you can just speed it up. Or if you know how to take pictures, um, you just take a picture every single time, compile them into like a GIF or something. So that's really interesting. This animation, if we skip to the end, will look like that. Um, one quick animation that I rendered, for example, was e to the z on the right half of the plane. So here it is now. Yeah, so that animation is really good. Um, personally, I think my uh, choice of grid colors between red and blue, orange and green are probably the best. You can obviously change those colors. Um, maybe I should have made blue perpendicular to red, whatever it is. Um, you can definitely give me feedback in the comments for whatever silly stuff, or if you feel like you'd like me to add any functions. Um, and but um, the final thing, since it's analytical, is um, radius of convergence. And 
how to really maximize efficiency or say I want a quick animation, a rough sketch, you can turn down the number of derivatives that are being used to form a Taylor series. So I'd say the most prevalent thing is log of z. So log's pretty popular, unfortunately. Actually, let's start with something that's even worse than log, unfortunately. Um, that square root of z, it doesn't behave very well because, um, you know, if you look at square root of x, obviously, it, it just, it cuts off. Now, that wouldn't be a problem, right, because you can go into the negatives, it's the complex plane, but again, this calculator doesn't recognize square root of minus one, ever. It does not know, it knows that i squared is negative one, but it doesn't know what i is inherently, it's a parameter. So, unfortunately, square roots don't really work. What I could have added is something like a polar thing where I would define r and theta. You know, theta would be the argument function, and then um, r would be square root of x squared plus y squared. Where those are the real and imaginary parts, respectively. Um, I could have done that. Um, I didn't really want to add Just too many stop. functions. Just stop it! So back to radius of convergence. Um, as you can see, this grid, which was here, is not processing. And so if you do take, if you turn down the number of derivatives, the grid should pop up. Sometimes toggling it. Yeah, it does take a while. So you see five derivatives works for log. Six, if the grid stays here, you'll know six works. Unfortunately, it's just a very slow process. To, um, you can also check if, if the derivative, if this list capital F, if there's no orange triangle here telling, giving you a warning, everything's fine. So six derivatives works for log Z. It'll be a pretty good approximation. What you want to test sometimes is radius of convergence if stuff makes sense. So if we actually go back to a point function, all of this does take a lot of processing power and for my Mac, it's kind of rough as hell, yeah. Um, this is all taking a while. Uh, <laughs> I think the point I was getting at, we're just gonna skip this, I think the point I was getting at is that the log function only makes sense within this area. So yes, this is my first version of a rough complex number sketcher thing. If you enjoyed, make sure to smash like because you may condition me in a Pavlonian sense to produce more videos or do more work on this complex calculator. So that would be highly appreciated. And until next time, see ya.